Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in my this particular video, I am going to discuss about anomaly detection, one of the very important and interesting topic in machine learning and data science domain. Okay, so what is anomaly first? Let us try to understand. Anomaly is nothing but outlier. Okay, a rare or unusual observation in our data. Like for example, in credit card transaction, fraudulent transaction, are anomalies because those are very few compared to normal transaction and those are quite different from normal transaction so those can be considered as outliers or anomalies now let us try to understand how we can detect those okay so there are several techniques which i covered while discussing outlier detection techniques in the data pre-processing stage of data science or machine learning projects right one of the popular technique which i covered is three sigma rule that is we basically compute the z score for our that data point and if the absolute value of the z score is exceeding three sigma that time we can consider that that particular data point is an outlier okay so the picture can be shown like this suppose i am having some data points i try to fit a gaussian distribution data i try to compute gaussian distribution for those data points okay which is having uh, mean as mu and standard deviation as sigma so the probability distribution or probability density function looks like this 1 by root over of 2 pi sigma square multiplied by e to the power minus of x minus mu whole square by sigma square right now what i have told you minus 3 sigma to 3 sigma if some data point is if the z score of the data is falling under that region that can be considered as normal data point but if the absolute value of the z score is exceeding 3 sigma that is in negative side it is going uh, 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 beyond uh, minus 3 sigma in the left direction or in the positive side it is going beyond plus 3 sigma in the right side then this particular uh, those data points will come in these shaded regions and those can be considered as outliers right now let us try to map the same concept in higher dimension so in this video i am going to discuss in two dimension outlier detection or anomaly detection okay so you can consider the uh, data the scatter plot of our input uh, data like this okay so there are two input features x1 and x2 and if we draw this scatter plot we will be getting this data okay and this blue colored star is also included in our data set so from the visual inspection itself we can clearly conclude that this blue colored data is basically going to be outlier because this this is quite different from rest of the data points rest of the data points in between x1 and x2 feature there is a high correlation if x1 feature increases x2 feature is also increasing but this data point is not following that behavior and it is significantly different from rest of the data points so we can easily say that this is an outlier but how can we detect this let us try to understand so what we will do like here in one dimension case we computed probability okay so basically we said like this if z score is positive if the absolute value of the z score is exceeding 3 sigma that time that can be considered as outlier so what it, what that means okay let us try to understand so here minus 3 sigma and here plus 3 sigma is present suppose if we are going beyond minus 3 sigma or plus 3 sigma that is this part we can see that the probability of those regions is actually very less higher probability is concentrated within minus 3 sigma to 3 sigma that's why we are telling that if the data point is exceeding minus 3 sigma in the left side or plus 3 sigma in the right side that in the probability from the gaussian distribution itself we are getting very less so the uh, that indicates that uh, the probability of happening those kind of event will be less so we can consider those as outlier in one dimension case now same concept we will apply in two dimension but this is there are two features so we need to get the probability values for each data point for with respect to x1 variable and x2 variable and then we will com uh, compute the overall probability okay so how we are going to compute that so for any data point what is the probability with respect to gaussian distribution if you want to consider here suppose this data point so we need to compute p of x1 comma x2 considering x1 and x2 as random variable right now x1 and x2 are what x1 and x2 are our input features okay those are independent right those should not be dependent on each other 
right that's what the funda fundamentals of machine learning says okay so probability of x1 comma x2 we can easily say equal to probability of x1 multiplied by probability of x2 so to compute the probability we can uh, use this particular simple formula of uh, probability and statistics that is probability of x1 comma x2 equal to probability of x1 multiplied by probability of x2 if x1 and x2 are independent so what we can do to get the overall probability in this two dimension we will compute probability for any data point in the x1 direction and in the x2 direction we will multiply those okay we will get the overall probability and if the overall probability comes very less how to understand whether very less or not so less we can adjust one particular threshold okay and the threshold has to be chosen very wisely and based on that threshold if the probability uh, overall probability goes below that particular threshold we can consider that okay that is nothing but outlier okay like that we will go so uh, for any data point we need to compute first the probability in x1 and x2 uh, direction okay how can we do that simple these are our data points take projection on x1 direction that these are basically x1 values for all these data points similarly take projection on x2 or y axis you will be getting the x2 values considering this x1 you uh, make one probability gaussian probability distribution considering this x2 you make another gaussian probability distribution and the shape will look like this so this gaussian distribution is probability of x1 okay all this projection along x1 direction we have taken we try to compute mu1 that is mean and uh, variance okay or if we say sigma1 that is basically standard deviation okay so once we get uh, the mean and standard deviation for any data point we can easily compute what is the probability right similarly these x2 projection values we can take here and then again we can compute mean and standard deviation and we can get what is the probability for any data point okay like for example uh, suppose for a particular data point along x1 the value is this one what is the probability that is this is the probability right we can easily compute using that formula of probability similarly uh, like uh, for x2 feature any value is taking like at this location then what is the probability with respect to gaussian distribution that is this value right so to get the overall probability for any data point we need to multiply these two probabilities okay so in terms of mathematics we can say like this overall probability p of x equal to uh, summation symbol is for used for addition and this pi symbol used to denote that we need to keep on multiplying these values okay so j equal to 1 to n pi symbol that indicates multiplication 1 by root over of 2 pi sigma j if you want to put sigma j inside root over it will be sigma j square as i have taken this sigma j outside the root over so i kept like this okay whatever mathematical notation you want to use you can use that no issue in that multiplied by e to the power minus of xj minus mu j square by 2 sigma j square what is this j j variable is basically indicating each input feature like there are two input feature in this case so we are multiplying two probabilities only uh, to get overall probability of each data point right so n n is total number of input features okay present in our data set which we are going to use for training our machine learning model okay so like this we can get the overall probability with respect to both uh, input feature for each data point and then we can adjust a particular threshold if the probability values overall probability values goes below that particular threshold we can consider okay that is outlier okay right or anomaly so what is the anomaly detection algorithm using gaussian distribution says calculate mean and standard deviation for all the input features okay and then you have to for each data point you have to compute the probability okay p of x equal to j equal to 1 to n that is for each input feature what is the probability value so you need to multiply okay p of xj and uh, where mu j and sigma j square are mean and variance respectively for that particular jth uh, input feature okay and flag as anomaly if probability that is overall probability less than epsilon what is epsilon epsilon is a particular threshold which we will be using as benchmark for detecting outliers that's it okay now this theoretical concept i hope you have got a feeling but the feeling will be more clear once we go to programming let me show you that okay so here let me start uh at lab online i am using
so i have already written the code let me take this particular code once the code i will be providing in the description box or in the comment section no need to worry about the single line of the code okay let us try to fill the idea with visualization first because uh, once we see the uh, see what is happening mathematically and programmatically then uh, it is hard to forget the concept okay and concept is power not the inbuilt functions or packages import this as this will not uh, make the strong feeling okay you can remember this visualization of the concept is the mathematical uh, concept whatever just now i have discussed so what is the code clc clear all close all winding up simple now i have taken one two dimensional data x uh, first uh, input feature you can consider as x1 second input feature you can consider as x2 okay second column right now here this is our data code will be posted no issue so you can try with that and the data is quite big now what i am doing first i am first doing scatter plot okay here let me give field okay so scatter plot of the data we want to do okay let me just run this particular part and show you So it might take some time. You have to wait. Yes. See here in Figure One, the scatter plot we can see. So this is our uh, x2 feature in y-axis, x1 feature in x-axis. We can see the scatter plot. We can clearly understand that uh, most of the data points are concentrated along this part. So all these data points, wherever I am moving my mouse pointer, there is a probability that these are uh, outliers. Okay. So now let us try to apply the same concept and try to get the visualization. Okay. So what is the first step? I have told you that for each input feature, we need to compute the mean and standard deviation because we need to fit the Gaussian distribution for each input feature. We need to compute the probability and then we can multiply all of them and then we have to use thresholding. Okay. So mean features equal to mean of x. So x is my uh, this particular matrix which is storing my input features. Okay. And if we use the mean function it will compute the mean column wise okay so for first column and second column that is two inputs for the two input features we can get the mean if we want we can display the mean similarly we can compute the standard deviation here okay now we need to fit the gaussian distribution on our first column and second column separately so norm pdf x okay probability distribution function along x axis norm pdf is the function to feed Gaussian distribution, you can simply uh, go in the comment form and write norm uh, PDF. Okay, just hit enter, and here you can read about this particular function. It returns the probability density function of normal distribution. Okay, normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. Perfect. So, here what I have done. For x direction, I have given the mean of the x values and standard deviation of the x values for getting the probability uh, the, the density functions or probability values for y direction. I am giving the y data points first and the mean of y data points and standard deviation of y data points. Okay, so once we get these individual probabilities and of individual uh, dimensions, okay, uh, or individual input features. To get the overall probability, we need to multiply. Okay, the same equation which I have just now shown here. That is to get the overall probability, we need to multiply. Okay, right. So once that is done, what we need to do? We can do scatter plot. Okay, and here the scatter plot I am uh, for coloring purpose to show the probability values how those are changing. I am giving here the color as overall. Okay, that is overall probability will be showing the color. Okay right the yellow color region will be having higher probability the blue color region will be having lower probability like that okay let us check so here we can run this particular part only because after this we ran already so here just we need to do evaluate selection in comment window okay so in a new figure window we can see the data points but it will uh, give the color according to the probabilities higher probabilities will be having yellow color like see here so as 
we, we just intuitively try to understand using mathematics. Here, most of the data points centered around this. So, probability, overall probability of after multiplication will be more along these centers. So, these are having yellow colors. You can see the color bar. Okay. More probability is 0.12 close to that is yellow color. And as we are moving away, that is anomaly parts or outlier parts are having blue color. See, blue color is having less probability 0.02 like that. Okay. The color bar is clearly showing that. Now, what we need to do? Once we get the overall probability, we need to specify a proper threshold and then we need to detect those anomalies. Okay, so threshold value is equal to 0.02 I am choosing in this particular case. The threshold value has to be chosen very wisely based on the business use case. Okay, and proper tuning has to be done. Otherwise, uh, it might happen improper choosing of threshold value may lead to such scenarios where anomalies will be considered as normal data point or normal data points will be considered as anomalies. Okay, so you need to choose the threshold values very, very properly by trial and error method you can go ahead or cross validation you can use. Okay, threshold value equal to 0 0.02 to be specified for our this case. Outlier set equal to if the overall probability less than the threshold values and if the overall probability less than threshold values we are taking those data points and we are plotting in red color. Okay. So now what we can do? We can just uh, plan basically the whole code notion that let me just do control A and then do the failure selection. So eventually what will happen that all the anomalies will be uh, detected as red color. Okay. So here this figure one is our input data points okay where we need to detect the anomalies from the visual inspection you can see these are anomalies but if you check the figure two here we can clearly understand that how beautifully the anomalies are detected using multi-dimensional Gaussian distribution okay because this is in two dimension we are trying to fit uh, Gaussian distribution and we are trying to get p of x1 comma x2 Okay, in this case, that is nothing but p of x1 multiplied by p of x2 because those input features are independent. But uh, we can understand how beautifully these anomalies are detected. See, all these red data points are anomalies are outliers in two dimension, and these are basically our original data point. That is normal event. Okay, right? And uh, suppose in interview you were asked what is uh, uh, what type of machine learning is this? There is no doubt this is unsupervised machine learning. You may ask why. Simple here, we are not having labels in our data. Okay, so in that unlabeled data, our machine learning is try to uh, uh, detect the outliers and non outliers or anomalies on and normal data. Okay, so this is unsupervised machine learning. So, I hope you have enjoyed this particular session. This is all for my this video. If you find this video helpful, then please like, share, and comment. Subscribe my channel if you have not subscribed till now. And don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of my latest videos. Thank you.